So this is, this is a really simplistic um, creation. Why do large physical volume subwoofers, or, or for that matter, let's link it to driver size, tend to produce deeper bass? When you go to reproduce deep bass, and I'm gonna define deep bass as, let's call it below 40 hertz, um, give you an idea that we're getting down into a, an area where there may be a dozen instruments in the entire world that their entire tonic range operates between, say, 20 hertz and 40 hertz. Hertz, by the way, is number of cycles per second. Um, you know, mid ranges tend to be up in the hundreds to low thousands. High frequencies go from a few thousand on up to 20,000. Uh, and, and bass, um, you know, middle bass tends to be pitched around 60 hertz. I'm just trying to give you guys a frame of reference for what you're listening for when you hear it. So a kick drum typically pitched between 48 and 55 hertz gives you an idea. And most people think that's low bass. Low bass actually exists below that. So starting at about 40 hertz and down, you're, you're really talking now about low bass uh, in the range from 20 to 30 hertz uh, and, and below 20 is where it gets very, very, very difficult and typically fairly expensive. Um, the advantage you have with just greater surface area, a 12 inch versus an eight inch, uh, you're talking about something on the order of two and a half times as much actual um, circular surface area. There are really only two ways, two mo motions, right? You either have size or you have stroke. It's either moving in and out a great deal, and there are limits to how, how much that can do, uh, but in and out movement and then the size of the driver itself. Uh, and what people don't understand is the smaller the cabinet, um, the more restricted the air spring is. I'm talking only of sealed box designs now. So when you have a small tight cabinet, um, you are effectively, the louder you are playing it, uh, and, and typically it takes louder at lower frequencies for it to maintain its sense of loudness relative to the music. That's just a function of our ears. They drop off in efficiency at very low frequencies. Um, so you, you are now fighting. On the outstroke, you've got this huge room. You've got a room that's a, a couple of thousand to you know, eight, 10,000 cubic feet. Uh, in, in the case of a small, say one foot and smaller, um, as you stroke back and forth, the outstroke, no problem. You're loading into 2,000 to 8,000 cubic feet, feet. The instroke, you're loading into a cubic foot or less. And that becomes an increasingly stiff resistance on it. So you've just got to balance those things out and you've got to balance that out against your main speakers. If your main speakers themselves are really high quality main speakers that go down you know, into the 40 hertz range or below, you're going to have to have a really serious subwoofer meaning it's going to have state-of-the-art drivers, state-of-the-art amplifiers, and a cabinet large enough to take advantage of those, of those things. There's just no way around it. So some of this will come about naturally as you start to define the needs of your system. Um, we've, we've sort of made our name over the last 30 years building really, really high quality, small to medium sized for the most part. At, at the moment, I believe we have um, 10 different models and seven of them would be described as medium or smaller. We only have three up in our reference range, uh, the 212, the, the G1, uh, and the number 25, that are truly large subwoofers. Um, everything else is, is really scaled to fit into someone's idea of a normally sized living room. Uh, you know, everybody has different definitions of that. But that's the, 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 the basic relationship between size, output, and how deep it can go. Um, you, you just at some point get into limitations of how much or how little um, cabinet volume you have available to yourself. And uh, you know, we, we've got different tricks for, for getting coaxing more out. If you have a relatively small piece and you throw tons of power at it, like we just did with a, a range of ours, we, we can essentially force the driver to act a little bit better. But you really want to stay within sort of the natural relationships of driver size, stroke, and that cabinet volume to keep it all in balance.